Having a mega beacon with every single effect and a full set of enchanted netherite gear is how you show dedication to getting the very best that Minecraft has to offer. However, this is the Lamborghini or the Ferrari of the Minecraft world. It's great, don't get me wrong, but I'd be much more interested in someone driving this. And the same is true for Minecraft. Wouldn't you be more interested in seeing my enchanted flint and steel? I love this so much more, and so today's video is dedicated to the weird things in Minecraft that can still show dedication and effort, but that aren't just the very best of the best. Instead, they're more of a flex because they are interesting and different, and they show dedication and time without simply being the obvious thing that everyone aims for. Everyone knows that if you had a billion dollars, you would buy some very expensive cars, but they might not know that you'd buy this, or this, or this. Uh, you know, honestly, I can only name one very interesting car, and it's the Robin Reliant, and I want one of those more than I want a Lamborghini, because wouldn't it be interesting? If I level with you for a second, uh, the Robin Reliant probably is the only, like, dream stupid car that I'd actually want. I think the really, really tiny smart cars, or the Cybertruck are maybe the exceptions, but still, you know, the this, 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 it's just... It's all tiny, 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 ridiculous cars that no one should drive. Uh, aren't they more interesting? Isn't that what a real billionaire would drive? Maybe not. But yeah, basically, I'm going to be trading in my Neverite tools today for ones that show that I care in a much greater way. And a great example of that might be the fact that I have these Neverite boots of depth strider and protection and feather falling and mending. But rather than wearing something that protects me so strongly, wouldn't it make more sense if I had something that was a little bit weaker but looked a bit cooler? This shows that I went through all the effort of getting chain boots. Um, you know, getting chain armor is one of the hardest armor sets in the game. Maybe you could argue just as hard as Neverite. And then putting a weird enchantment, which you can't get naturally basically anywhere. You have to just enchant books till you get. And then you get these chain boots of Fawn's One. They'll protect you significantly less well. We might also want mending on these to keep them alive, but you know, they're gonna, ch yeah, let, let's do that actually. They're gonna protect you significantly less well. However, at the same time, look at that. I'm wearing boots that aren't even really boots. You can see right through them. You, my, my feet are barely protected. This is, I don't know, is this like Crocs or sandals or something in the Minecraft world? Same with my totem and dying. I mean, not dying sounds like a great deal, but you know, I could get good protection just as well from an enchanted shield. <laughs> and isn't the enchanted shield a pretty cool looking item to have right there? I think you'll find it is. Same with uh, basically every piece of uh, gear that we have. We can equip a gold helmet with aqua affinity on it. We can put these weird leather pants on and we can have a set of gear that shows like actually all of this takes some effort to put together, right? Like having uh, enchanted gold might be the easiest of the batch. That might be a little bit too functional uh, for my liking, but still look at this set of armor and it says much more about you. You've gone to the end to get an Elytra, but you still are using a shield rather than a totem. You've, you, you've gone all that distance, but you've got leather trousers. And here's the reason why you want leather trousers, right? Because leather trousers are the only, th well, in fact, leather anything is the only set of gear that you can die. True customization is only available to those who sacrifice the very best of the best. And just to just be clear here, you could still enchant with protection four on your leggings if you wanted to. I mean, I've got a type of protection four, but can your Neverite leggings do this for you? Wow, what is that? Green enchanted gear on my legs? We can do it with our chest plate and our boots and our helmet too. Again, whichever variety of these three things you use, totally plausible. I personally love the mismatch set. It shows that I went really far out of my way because, you know, if you have a mismatch set, you probably just got it from zombies is the assumption most of the time. But this is every piece is enchanted. Every piece is, you know, well put together. We're pretty decent enchantments too. And so this is just how I roll around my world. I am that good at reducing the threat in my world because, you know, if you torch around enough of an area, mobs don't spawn. Do you see how it's nighttime and I'm hanging around here not worried about anything? That's because there are no mobs that can get me while the world is this lit up. If you want to see it from above, by the way. Look at this. Do you see how much of the world is purely lit? This is something you can do and then you don't need good armor. Then armor is just an aesthetic choice to you in the same way that like, uh, you know, like really, really expensive things are like super, super blingy designed to be like, oh yes, this is what rich people wear. Whereas rich people actually just, uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> wait, the, the fun example is how being fat used to be this great sign of being rich because wow, you or be, being uh, being really white also, because you didn't have to go out in the field all day and work, you know, and burn all your calories and get burnt by the sun. Wow, you can be really, really light skinned, pale skinned, sickly skinned and large. It's like, ooh, yeah, and in the Minecraft, 
You don't even need to wear good armor? No. What, what, what am I going to run into that my trusty enchanted shield can't protect me from? But yeah, this goes further than just your gear that you keep on you. Because obviously, having, uh, you know, for example, uh, it, you know, like ha having your tools be Neverite, it makes a lot of sense. Because you're going to want to be do using the best stuff that you have available, right? However, what if that's not true? Something I only learned you could do in Minecraft recently is you can craft books by using free paper and one lever in any order you want which is absolutely far too chaotic to make any sense. <laughs> but whatever, you can do this, and so that's what we're going to be doing to craft our books today. Yeah, we don't even need societal norms where we're going. We can... <laughs> how is How does this make any sense? I don't understand it. I'm, of course, over here to replenish my shears, which are a little bit low on experience. I mean, same with the flint and steel and my new source of uh, damage, by the way, this crossbow of multi-shot. That's going to be fun later, but... um. Yeah, I, I want to make sure I heal these things up while I buy mending because obviously the same villagers who will sell you mending are also ones who will buy books from you for extraordinary value. They don't even care if the books have anything written in them. They just have to be generic books. I don't know how I just did that, but I think I've ended up with my villager trapped in a composter. Oh, well, that... <laughs> this village... Is a very weird place. If you haven't seen it, by the way, this is this is my village where I destroyed a village and then used the blocks to add to another village. So it's like two villages worth of blocks all in one place. I really like how it ended up. I think there's a lot of silly living situations here, but haven't we all done something a bit silly when we needed to? Maybe just me, okay. But yeah, I'm here for mending and I'm not gonna stop until I've got it. That just might take a little bit of waiting politely. So I've been on a bit of a journey just now. I had to go all the way to my village that is 4,000 blocks away because that's my nearest mending trade. And then once I did some trading to get the emeralds I needed for mending a couple of times, then I needed to get unbreaking. And my only unbreaking trading villager is in the end. And you might say, isn't it very efficient to have to go through the nether, out of the nether, into the end, across a nice pathway, and then trade with a villager? You might think that's inefficient, but I like my world being like that. Thank you very much. But then after that I had to come back back across the ice pathway and now I'm finally here and do you know why I'm here it's because I want to use some of that gold that I had lying around earlier apparently it's gone I've got some more gold now that is lying around and definitely is not for this purpose let me show you something fascinating which is the gold hoe the gold hoe is objectively worse than a neverite hoe especially if the neverite hoe is enchanted you might assume however what if I told you that even after the addition of Neverite to the game, gold is still better at a few things. There are still some things that gold just does faster, and uh, so if you put mending, hypothetically, on your gold hoe, if you then put unbreaking, hypothetically, on your gold hoe, that gold hoe would mine certain blocks faster than a Neverite hoe. But obviously I hear what you're saying, well, obviously having those enchantments on there means nothing, because... I mean, like, it's gonna break in, like, even with unbreaking, like, a hundred uses or so. But what if I told you there's one use for the gold hoe where you will replenish your gold hoe at the exact same speed that you're using it at? And you might think that I'm crazy, but just trust me on this one. I think the real crazy thing is that I have to cross my entire world just to prove this point. But you know what? I'm gonna do it because it's that damn important. So you might know about the ancient city that I destroyed, or, you know, like, for the vast majority, you know, it's, it's gone. Look, you can't see an ancient city here. You might know about this one, but you might not know I'm really fortunate or lucky, or it seems that, that way at least, that only a few hundred blocks away from here, um, without as many <laughs> moving around minecart chests filled with ancient city, I do actually have a second ancient city. This one is below a giant mountainous jungle biome, which, you know, kind of sucks from a getting to it perspective. But uh, yeah, we just start digging down from wherever the easiest point is, I guess if we go. Oh, there's a nice little valley. If we dig down from there, we should find it, I hope. Let's find out by doing it. Oh! Wait, really? Should have had a ton of fun dying on me, really. <laughs> what? Why did I die from such a short fall? I need to watch the foot... Was I really low on health and just didn't realize? Why did that kill me? I... I don't even have my elytra to... What just happened? So let's politely ignore that because the real flex is having enough time 
to go for all the effort of fixing that. And also getting your experience back. Wow, would you like to get lots of experience with no effort required whatsoever? All you gotta do is use a golden hoe. Because the golden hoe gets the experience back from mining the skulk, which it does faster than ever, right? Putting efficiency five on one of these is a great idea. What I only realized after I'd gotten here, I don't have efficiency five on there. So we're gonna have to imagine, but I can promise you that especially with a pace two beacon, it does the instant mine. And so, wow, isn't that incredible? You can just mine blocks and get experience back endlessly. Wow, that is why the gold hoe is wonderful. Also, while we're here anyway, I want to point out, um, I, I have this idea because obviously the other ancient city is like, uh, I, I, it's destroyed, that's the whole point of it. This one, ignoring the bit which apparently is burnt by lava, uh, this one I figured, you know, one of my silly projects that you definitely can't do because it's just so deep on the ground is uncovering it. I had an idea as to how you might uncover an entire ancient city or large portions of it and make it actually light in here. And so that's something I think I might do. Let me know if you think it's a good idea in the comments because, you know, it's there's a lot of ideas I have where they're big commitments. And so ha knowing that other people care is a useful thing in uh, wanting to do them. Anyway, let's get out of here. I don't know how we're going to do that, actually. But let's do it. By the way, just a single block column down, by the way, you can see it because of all the light it brings in. Imagine having a ton of those down. It would take so much time, but imagine if it was easy. Anyway, let's see if we can get out or if we get hit by- Oh, no! I cannot afford a second death. <laughs> but I don't need a totem from dying because I'm that darn sure, you see? That was scary. This is a big waste of fireworks, but I don't care because I am made of fireworks. Pro tip, whenever you have a hole in the ground like this, to prevent losing it, or even worse, losing it by and then falling into it while looking, I recommend making a little stack next to it. Uh, it, it might save your life at some point. Better than any lousy totem would. I'm sticking to my trusty shield, that's for sure. I was thinking about my food just now, after my journey back from the other side of my world, and you know what? Mutton is just not a very good flex food. This is just some sheep that I happen to kill at some point and then cook. It's not, you know, the most impressive food in the game. I would say, if you want to have a high quality food, rabbit is probably the one for you, right? I mean, uh, especially if you're eating this stuff raw. By the way, raw rabbit is like better raw chicken, because you can't get sick from raw rabbit. I wonder if that's true in real life. Should we should we test that in a video sometime? But no, you actually, uh, you, uh, uh, raw rabbit is the food if you want to flex some people because all the other animals are so easy to find. You see how I just ran past the sheep and a horse? I don't know why we don't have horse meat in Minecraft, but you get the point. Horse, sheep, cows, they're all very easy to find, whereas rabbits are such a nightmare to get your hands on. Do you see my point? There's a sheep here, there's a chicken here, but I don't know where to find rabbits. I know they're in certain biomes more than others, and I know that in one of those biomes, at some point I gathered a few rabbits and put them in a hole just because of this very same issue here. Because it's hard. I guess we'll just go into this ice spikes biome and we'll find some cold rabbits manually. It'll suck, but we'll do it. Do you notice the lack of rabbits? Do you notice how they're not a common mob? I, I don't actually know how Minecraft spawning works, but rabbits just seem to spawn way less commonly than other mobs. I mean, I have polar bears before I had rabbits. Although, fun fact, you know what? You kill a polar bear. That's that's one way to get some food too. You know what? You know what? The food that this is the second uh, best food in my opinion. If you kill polar bears to get their raw salmon, you know, ignore ignore the poor little baby. It's it's fine. But if you kill polar bears to get their raw salmon, this is a high quality source of food too. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's pretty decent. <laughs> wow, with looting, you get so many raw salmons from a bear. Don't you think that because I killed the bear with fire, you know, like in the same way. If I killed a chicken on fire, he would drop cooked chicken. Don't you think a, a cooked polar bear should drop cooked salmon? Because if there was raw salmon on him or inside of him or whatever, it'd be cooked by the explosion. Also, no, 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 this is my, this is my guy, friends, friends, this is mine. This is, this, no, 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 you f bastards. The real flex though is killing rabbits, not with some random uh, things that just spawned, but instead with your gold hoe. Apparently it uses no durability. But that still did damage to them, right? Yeah, you get extra, extra damage without any durability. Wait, does that work for all of them? Or did I just get lucky because it's got unbreaking on? I have no, no idea if none of one's true. But go around a biome, kill some with your, your golden hoe, get some lovely rabbit uh, leather. This is just like regular leather, except it's four times harder to get, plus being, you know, exceptionally harder to kill rabbits. And yeah, this is how you get the flex food in Minecraft 
the ultimate, in my opinion. Isn't it kind of sad you can't breed baby polar bears? I mean, like, you know, it would be nice if he could be my friend, if we could have him in a... You know, why don't I have a polar bear in my museum somewhere? They are a cute little animal. Do you think he can stay a baby forever if we just put string above him? That's probably not how that works. Oh, before I show you the next flex, uh, I just realized, you know what? I think eating raw rabbit might be a little bit silly. I think it does make sense that we cook it. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure we get that done right now. Um, obviously, I'm just going to uh, get my furnace down. It's weird that I didn't have a furnace over here anyway. I'm going to uh, put my raw rabbit in there. And I need to cook it with something. So, you know, who knows what I'll just use. You know what? This, this seems like a nice, easy one to use. Uh, throw that in there. And... Uh, and just like that, we got ourselves a cooked rabbit. This right here is the primo cooked rabbit. I cooked him over a, uh, a very... <laughs> that is the biggest waste of a diamond in Minecraft. Why does it even let you do that? Why was it decided that jukeboxes should burn? Um, but, you know, if you want to have the flexiest fuel in Minecraft, that's the way you do it. I don't know if that should be a goal for anyone, but it can be. I just realized that, you know what, just like the Robin Reliant, the fact that it dies every now and then is not a reason for you not to love this system over the Totem and dying. I mean, honestly, maybe it keeps you on your edge more, not knowing if you're going to make it to work every single day, or knowing that, you know, you're, you might die if you accidentally fall 20 blocks into an ancient city. You know, what? really, these are good things if we think about them logically. And so, yeah, what is the last big flex? Well, it comes back to the beacon. Everyone pictures a beacon like this, the Neverite beacon, to be the absolute best that you can achieve. However, I'm going to argue that that's, you know, that's so obvious as the best thing. That is you trying to put your accomplishments on display in a, in, in a little bit too obvious of a way. I think a much better way would be to take a shulker box like this, which is filled with cracked, polished stone bricks, which are obviously the best item in Minecraft because they, you know, they're... They've got a nice long name. Look at how much it fills up my screen. And then, uh, you know, to make a beacon out of blocks like this. These are the true uh, beacon-worthy blocks, in my opinion, because it's going to look like, again, it looks like it's a Neverite beacon just a bit, right? But it doesn't work. You don't need that amazing beacon effect. If you wanted to, you could use glass panes and simulate that, I bet. But you don't need that glass, uh, you know, that, that magical effect, because what you have is something more powerful than a beacon. You have the ability to not need a beacon. And, um, yeah, I think there is a very interesting, uh, like, message in our culture about, like, things like that. Is that, uh, there's always this desire for bigger and better and more. And that, that can lead humans to do some very good things. Don't get me wrong. But I also think at the same time, our, you know, endless desire for bigger, better, more is sometimes at the expense of other things. Ultimately, like, uh, you know the phrase, you can't have your cake and eat it too? It's a, it's a, it's a phrase that exists for a real reason. Once you've eaten your cake, you can no longer eat at a later date. And uh, the same thing is kind of true with like money management. If you spend all of your money now, then you won't be able to spend your money in the future. And as obvious as that may be, maybe that's the, the, the silliest, most obvious thing you've ever heard. I think, um, the, although it is very obvious, it is something we kind of forget that the biggest thing that money can provide is the ability to not need to, is the ability to be feel comfortable when you need to make a purchase versus some people think the best thing money can provide is, uh, we'll slide this under there, it'll be just fine. But um, the, the, some people think the biggest thing that money can provide is, I don't know, a cool Instagram shot or whatever else, like uh, the ability to have a really nice talking point and the next conversation you have with family or friends. And um, I don't know, I, it, it, it reminds me of, uh, I, I read a book um, <laughs> I, I think everyone read this book at some point for some school. Death for Salesman. And uh, one of the messages I never really, like, truly got across. And, like, because it's meant to be about the American dream. One of the things is, like, people want to be rich, but also to be popular. Being rich and being popular is seen as, like, co-linked things uh, in the United States. Uh, more than in other countries. And, um, you know, so, like, that's, that's one of the reasons that people... Uh, get the way they do. But that's also ignoring the utility of money. You're ignoring the utility of, um, you know, your super valuable stuff in Minecraft if uh, your whole purpose of spending your time is just for a nice display. Instead, spend the time because you enjoy it. And then if you have the spare blocks, do something fun with it. I have so many cracked stone polished bricks. <laughs> and I like that I have this little beacon right here because it kind of fits the area, in my opinion. I, I probably would have moved it a few blocks Actually, you know, we can just move it, right? We can just, if we, yeah, it wouldn't take too much effort to move it back a little bit. 
so it's more away from this. Because this going under here is a little bit messy, in my opinion. So let's remove a whole layer here. Up to there, I think, and a whole layer over here. And we can just move it. Because it fits the area, because obviously I mined an entire chunk, or I didn't mine an entire chunk because of things, but <laughs> I mined an entire chunk, right? And uh, so how did I do that? I used my beacon, my neverite beacon, in fact, or my crack polished stone bricks beacon. Uh, it fits the area, but also it makes a nice resting place for a beacon. I'm always losing beacons in this world. I should have, like, a set place where they rest. Um, I, I think an ender chest is a good way to do that too, don't get me wrong. But I also think this works just as well. So we move everything one block to the right. I think this just about works. So this is now the new corner there. We go an extra block this way and on this side. And then we get a little bit close to this chest. I think maybe I should just move that dirt block. <laughs> you know, let's not think about it. Um, then we move a whole set of other blocks over here. And then this is going to need a new third pillar, which goes like this. And then the very top moves over here. And then we remove these blocks. And I think, yeah, it's surprisingly easy to move a beacon a couple of blocks, even though it seems like a logistical nightmare. I kind of leave the beacon off center now, but you know, that's that's going too deep on our flex. Let me just have a little snack first. I think um, the most important thing to remember is that uh, like uh, money is this great utility. Time in Minecraft is this great utility. And uh, if you're like enjoying and working towards something, that can be the fun. Feeling like you have to do something is where so many of my like worst Minecraft things come from. It's like there's this terrible thing that I just don't really want to do, but I feel like I have to for some comment or whatever, uh, you know, like just to avoid some. And I, I think that's a, a negative way. Living your life by avoiding negative forces from other people is uh, a miserable way to live when compared to this. Living with your, your amazing crossbow as your primary form of defense, your enchanted flint and steel, your ideal food source. Um, this is just as great and perfect a way to live as the person who wants to have the maxed out armor and the maxed out everything. And uh, yeah, as uh, in, re in reality, I think it's also worth mentioning. I'm being kind of fun and facetious in most of this. Uh, just to prove the point that everything has value to someone. I I realized recently, uh, my, my room is very tiny here in the UK, uh, vice that. And like, sometimes I think to myself, like, do, do I wish I'd, uh, you know, like picked a bigger room or like made it, you know, like I, I could have done something to make it bigger. But then other times I'm like, I realized that I actually really like cozy. I like everything being super close to each other, which is why in my houses, I need bigger storage, right? I've seen people make the house bigger, better, more useful in different ways, but I love the compactness of it all. It just takes a quick staircase climb and then a ladder climb and I'm in the attic. I love um, that things are kind of within reach. It's got my personal effects to it and you can love anything, um, even terrible things. And just remember that next time you feel lonely, because that means that someone will love you. Or maybe they won't. Maybe this is a Minecraft video. Who do I know? Uh, all I know is I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you consider becoming a member on the channel. Um, that's great here for and for live streams. Gives you the green name, the the fun emojis you can use in your, your comments and chat. And also, uh, get you access to a few member exclusive videos. They're not very good videos. But if you want to see a few weird things like uh, things that are, you know, like foods that are illegal in the US but aren't in the UK. You can do it over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoy because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna trade this up. I, I actually like these green leather pants. I feel like I wanna have them in there just as a wild card. Cause you know, the boots and the helmet, they they don't make that big a difference to your overall look. But the green leggings, they are quirky, right? How much armor are we losing? We go from four to uh what what do we what do we have with this on? We go from four to six. So, I mean, I could sacrifice two armor points for someone that looks pretty cool, right? I mean, they I bet they they give you, yeah, you know, it's its something. If I maxed out the enchantments on these, I reckon that's a good idea. Also, it says died on there, so that's fun. I might just do that, yeah.
carrots, golden carrots, or dandelions? Of course it's carrots, actually. How did I not remember that rabbits eat carrots? It's like their one defining trait. 